understanding my brain becoming humane. As I learn more about how my brain works, I can make better choices and decisions to be healthy, feel safe, and find calm. Your brain is an important and complex organ inside of your head. And in this book, you'll discover the four parts of your brain, how they work, and the ways they impact your behavior and decisions. First, we have Lizzie the lizard playing the hindbrain, Elsie the elephant playing the limbic brain, Malcolm the meerkat playing the amygdala, and Ozzie the owl playing the prefrontal cortex. Lizzie the lizard explains the hindbrain. I'm the part of your brain that makes your heart beat and you breathe to stay alive. I also help your body respond very quickly when you sense danger or feel unsafe. The hindbrain acts fast in real danger to protect you. For example, if you touch a hot stove, your hindbrain tells your hand to quickly pull it away so you don't burn yourself. If the fire alarm goes off at your school, your hindbrain tells your body to quickly move to go to a safe space. Or if you forget to eat all day, your hindbrain sends hunger messages to remember to eat. The hindbrain protects you from real danger and keeps you healthy and safe and alive. But sometimes things happen that are not real danger, but make this part of your brain act fast without even thinking. When we have big feelings, for example, our hindbrain may tell us to fight, hurt others, ourselves, or the things around us, flight, run away, or even freeze like a statue losing our words or our ability to move. This is an example of Lizzie the lizard reacting fast to protect her. Lizzie remembers one day when she saw all the other parents picking their children up from school at the end of the day. Lizzie started to worry that her grandma would not remember to pick her up. She began to feel unsafe. So she threw a toy at the teacher while yelling, I don't like you. Lizzie didn't mean to hurt anyone. She threw the toy because she had big and scary feelings. This is just Lizzie's fight reaction when she feels scared or has big feelings. When this happens, sometimes she hurts others, herself, or the things around her. Lizzie will learn later in the book how to use these other parts of her brain to identify, communicate, and manage her big, scary feelings in healthier ways. What about you? Have you ever felt scared and your hindbrain reacted like Lizzie the lizard into fight? Then there's something called flight. Sometimes Lizzie's worried, scared, or feels unsafe and her heart starts to race and she tries to run away and hide. For example, one day Lizzie's school had an unexpected fire drill. When the loud fire alarm went off, the teacher said, time to line up. But Lizzie ran into a corner of the classroom feeling scared. This was Lizzie's reaction when she's scared or has big feelings. She's gonna learn other ways that she can respond when this happens. What about you? Have you ever been so scared or worried or felt unsafe that you wanted to run away and hide like Lizzie? Then there's something called freeze. Sometimes when Lizzie gets scared, worried, her heart starts to race, but her body freezes like a statue. Here's an example. Lizzie was excited today. She brought her cupcakes to share with everyone for her birthday. While walking to school, she tripped on a crack and the cupcakes fell to the ground and they were smashed. Lizzie was filled with so much sadness and surprise that her body froze like a statue. Her mom kept talking to her, but Lizzie couldn't hear a word. When Lizzie tried to open her mouth to talk, she had no words. She just sat on the ground frozen and didn't know what to do. It felt like her body would not move from that spot on the sidewalk. This is Lizzie's freeze response. When this happens, we might not, might not be able to move or we feel frozen or we might even lose our words. What about you? Have you ever felt worried, scared, or unsafe like Lizzie the lizard in your hindbrain? And you, and you froze? Ah, oh, there's another part of your brain. Elsie the elephant explains the limbic brain. This is the part of your brain that creates feelings. Sometimes our feelings can be calm, sometimes small, sometimes medium, and sometimes large. You can even have many feelings at the same time and feelings come and go. Here's what big feelings look like. There was a time when Elsie didn't get something she asked for in line at the store. So she got angry and her body started to shake and her heart was beating fast and she 
wanted to scream and cry. Or last year, everyone in Elsie's family forgot her birthday and her feelings were hurt. She felt so sad. She wanted to slam the door to her room and hide from everyone. Some things to know about feelings, there's not good or bad feelings. We can have many different feelings at once, sometimes just only one feeling. They can change through the day. They can be small, medium, and large. Sometimes when our feelings become really, really big, we can hurt others, ourselves, or even the things around us. Here's some examples of feelings, happy, calm, angry, sad, silly, proud. What feelings do you have right now? We can also pay attention to something called sensations inside of our body. Those are clues as to whether our feelings are small, medium, or large. Have you ever noticed your thoughts, your breathing, your temperature, your skin? your muscles, your energy level, or there's other things like feeling hungry or thirsty or tired. Those are all clues that can tell us how small, medium, and large our emotions are. Feelings and sensations come in different sizes. Think of a time when something happened to you that made you mad. What size were your feelings? Can you point to where they would be? Red means big, orange means medium, green means small. Do you remember the story about Elsie not getting what she wanted in line at the store? She wanted that candy bar so much. Her abuelita or grandma said no because they were going home for dinner and she did not want Elsie to spoil her appetite. Elsie's feelings were angry. The sensations in her body, her body started to shake and her heart was beating fast. And the size of her feelings were big. And her behaviors when she was angry and shaking and having big feelings, she started to yell, I want one really loud and started to scream and cry. What about you? Can you remember a time when you had big feelings in your limbic brain like Elsie? What sensations did you have or feelings and what were the size of them? Now we have another part of our brain. Malcolm the meerkat will explain that. This is the part of your brain called the alarm system. This part of your brain is always on the lookout for potential danger and ready to alert your brain and body when you don't feel safe or have big feelings. It can make your heart beat quicker, your hands feel sweaty, sometimes make your body shake. The amygdala sends messages to your brain that makes you sometimes feel like yelling or running away or hiding or even freezing like a statue. Those are called behaviors. The amygdala acts like a button in your limbic brain when you have big feelings or sensations that make you feel unsafe. The amygdala is pushed and sends messages to your hindbrain to wake up and fight, flight, freeze. It acts without even thinking. Ozzy the owl is going to help us figure out how we can manage our big emotions. This part of your brain called the prefrontal cortex is the part of your brain that helps you think and stay calm when you have big sensations and emotions. It helps you even focus for a long time. It helps you problem solve without hurting yourself, others, or breaking the things around you. It helps you use your words instead of hitting or yelling. And it can help you think of ways to feel safe and calm when you have those big sensations and emotions. Let's listen to what happened to Ozzy. Once somebody wouldn't let Ozzy play with them and Ozzy felt so mad, but instead Ozzy took a deep breath and decided to go play with some other friends instead. Here's another example of Ozzy's prefrontal cortex helping Ozzy feel safe and calm and not react. Ozzy really wanted to go outside, but Ozzy's mom said that first Ozzy had to finish their homework. Ozzy felt their heart racing and was so upset. Instead, Ozzy went to their room, pet the dog, after a while felt calm again, and then went out to finish their homework and was soon was able to go outside and play. This part of the brain can help you feel calm, the prefrontal cortex. When all the parts of our brain talk and work together, then we can think clearly, problem solve, and find solutions that are healthy and safe. When we're calm, we can think more clearly, solve problems, share with others, think of happier thoughts. 
When we're calm, our body, our heart beats slowly, our hands don't feel tense. We feel safe and our breathing becomes calm and soft and gentle. And when we're calm, we feel happy, safe, friendly, flexible. And when calm, we can start to play with others, focus on projects at school, listen and learn, share, and solve our problems without hurting others, ourselves, or the things around us. Here's some things that Ozzy does when Ozzy has big emotions. Ozzy either goes to or thinks of Ozzy's mom, grandma, Aunt Raina, and friends like Miguel, Alicia, and Manuel. There are objects that help Ozzy feel safe, like Ozzy's stuffed teddy. There are places that Ozzy can go to feel calm, like the bedroom or the tree in the backyard. Or maybe there's a place in school Ozzy goes to where Ozzy feels safe. There are things that Ozzy says to himself that helps him feel safe. I can take a deep breath. I can say to myself, it'll be okay. There are things that Ozzy uses from the imagination that help Ozzy feel safe, like imagining the family in the room or the comfy chair that Ozzy sits in, listening to the birds chirping or the purring of his cat Waldo or the smell Imagining the smell of the cookies that his mom makes or the newly cut grass in his backyard. Things that Ozzy can touch that help Ozzy feel safe, petting his dog or cat or touching the silky blankie on my bed. Or sometimes the peaceful feeling when I sit on the bench under the tree in his backyard makes him feel safe. These are the things that can cause Ozzy to calm big emotions. What about you? Can you think of a time where you use some of these things to help yourself feel safe? Adults that help you feel safe? Objects or things? Places you go? Animals? Things you say to yourself? Or things you can bring to your imagination that you can see, hear, smell, touch, or feel? When we know what's happening in our body, it allows us to manage our big sensations and feelings without hurting ourselves, others, or property. Can you practice now? Thank you so much for joining us for this reading.